Hi there, this is Harry, and welcome to English Lessons with Harry. Yep.、Yeah. Okay, so what are we going to talk to you about today? Well, we've got some advanced verbs. Okay, so these are specifically for those people who might want to go a little bit further with their English. These verbs are typically C one and C two verbs, and I'll explain to them very detailed what they mean and how to use them. And you could often and also use these if you're preparing for some exams or you want to write a very important business report, whatever it might be. So they're advanced verbs. Specifically for C one and C two, so I'm going to give them to you one by one. In fact, I've got ten of them. I'll give you the explanation or the meaning, and then I'll give you some examples. Okay, here goes. One, scrutinize, scrutinize. Two, hinder. Three, remunerate, remunerate. Be careful with the pronunciation. Remunerate. Nurture. Number four, nurture. Number five, deteriorate. Deteriorate. Number six, articulate. To articulate. Seven, to embrace. Embrace. Eight, liaise. Liaise. And usually with the preposition with liaise with somebody. And nine, accomplish. To accomplish. And finally, ten grasp, grasp. Okay, let's give you a sentence with the meaning, and let's give you some examples. Scrutinize. He scrutinized the face of his competition very carefully to see if there were any weaknesses. He scrutinized the face of his competition very carefully to see if there were any weaknesses. So when we scrutinize something, we look at it really, really carefully. Please scrutinize the document before you give it back. Please scrutinize your exam papers to make sure you've put in all the details before you hand in your exam paper to the examiner. He scrutinized the report line by line. Okay, so somebody looked at something in a lot of detail. Yeah, you know, we scrutinize when we study in great detail, either trying to find fault or to make sure everything was perfection. The gallery, the art gallery, had a bit of a suspicion about some painting that was hanging on the wall, so they got some expert to come and. Check it out to make sure it was an original. And the the expert came, and he spent many hours scrutinizing every square inch of the painting, and finally came up with the conclusion that indeed it was an original. Okay, and the gallery, of course, were very happy to scrutinize. To hinder, there was a lot of traffic on the road that hindered my progress. There was a lot of traffic on the road that hindered my progress. And to hinder something means to slow down, not necessarily stop completely, but to slow down. His progress was hindered by the diversion in the high street. So they were doing some road repairs, and everybody had to turn off left before they got to the high street, and then go an roundabout way around the the city. So progress was hindered. His career was hindered because he had to take two years leave of absence when he was extremely sick. So he didn't progress his career as much as he had hoped. So when we hinder something or we hinder somebody, we slow them down or we prevent them from making progress. He hurt his leg when training for the marathon, and it hindered his training program quite a bit. So in the end. He decided to cancel his application and、uh, and his entrance, and would do the marathon race the following year. So his training program was hindered by the injury that he picked up during training: a sore leg, a sprained ankle, damaged ligaments, whatever it might have been to hinder. I just want to take a few minutes to advise you about a platform that I've come across recently, which is called Bazoo. It's available on desktop and also as an app on your mobile phone. It's really a great way to learn languages. You can learn French, German, lots of languages, and of course, including English. 
You can go in at any particular level, the beginner level, but I would recommend that you take the placement test and that will assess the level you are at and you can go in from A1 right up to B2. You can plan and start planning for the goals that you want to achieve. You can decide whether you want to learn at the weekends and indeed you can set your targets for each day. We all have at least 10 minutes a day when we can set aside for something so you can set aside 10, 15, 20 minutes a day that you can learn your English. And of course, you'll be able to practice English for grammar, vocabulary, reading, listening, and writing. So let's take a quick look as to what they have available. So when I look at the screen, I can look at the whole list of the particular lessons. I can click on it here and it'll show me the type of lessons that we have, complete English, English pronunciation, vocabulary lessons, the world in English, the vocabulary you need when you're traveling, and then business English as well. So when we look at business English, it gives us a whole list of separate lessons connected with business. And when you get to that particular stage, then they have lots of individual exercises. What you can do there is you can complete the answers, you can have the option to drop in the answers, you can listen, you can type, and then you also have the option to record your particular answer, and then you can send it to a native speaker who will correct it and get back to you. So why is Buzu different? Well, it's not just about learning vocabulary. It's using and learning vocabulary in context. You get the opportunity and the chance to practice it in a natural way. You also get the chance to answer open questions. You can record those and you can send them to a teacher, a native teacher, who can check them for you. You should try it. You can start for free. They also have a premium version with some additional features. Check out Buzu with the links in the description below and try out the Buzu premium free trial for seven days. Thanks Buzu for sponsoring this lesson. Next, remunerate. Well, we remunerate means to pay somebody. So a sentence would be, he was remunerated for his hard work when they paid him a very substantial bonus. He was remunerated for his hard work when they paid him a very substantial bonus. So to remunerate somebody is to pay them and pay them appropriately for the work that they have done. So from this word remunerate comes remuneration. So if you're applying for the job, you might ask what the salary is, okay, or what is the remuneration? What is the payment for this particular job? So to remunerate is to pay. To remunerate uh, appropriately is to pay them the going rate or the right rate of pay for that particular job, to remunerate. It's very formal, of course, yeah, because normally we would talk about salaries and the salary you're going to be paid. Next, nurture, to nurture, when we nurture something. Okay, so let's give you the, the sentence, nurture. The female cat nurtured the litter of newborn kittens that were born last week. So when the kittens are born, the mother nurtures them. She looks after them very, very carefully and in a detailed way for many, many weeks. She feeds and washes them and protects them and if you go near the cat you'll know all about it because she could get quite angry and annoyed and aggressive and spit and hiss at somebody who might come near her so she nurtures her kittens she feeds them she washes them she trains them to go to the toilet because they're not able to do that themselves and until such time as they've opened their eyes and are beginning to wander about then she would relax and eventually she won't want to know them because they will be off and on their own. But for the first six or eight weeks or ten weeks, she will nurture them. Okay, so to nurture means to look after, to, to take care of. Yes, we nurture our children when they are born. We nurture them for many, many years. Yeah? So to nurture, to look after in a very kind and gentle, loving, natural way deteriorate and get the pronunciation right here to deteriorate the service in the city has deteriorated since the new government took over the service in the city has deteriorated since the new government took over and what it means is to deteriorate means to get worse or to 
drop down in levels or to a level that is really unacceptable. So if you were used to getting the bins collected um, Monday, Wednesday and Friday, and then when the new government come in, they announce that the bins are only going to be collected on a Wednesday or a Friday once a week. So the service deteriorates, it gets worse. The bus journeys that used to take 20 minutes now take 30 minutes because there's so much traffic and they haven't built a wider road. So as a result, the service on the buses has also deteriorated. There's been a lack of investment. Somebody's condition in hospital might deteriorate if they pick up another infection. So they go into hospital for one condition and when they're in there a week or so, they get another infection and the doctor says, well, I'm really sorry to let you know, but your son or husband or wife or daughter, their condition has deteriorated slightly over the last 24, 36 hours. We've increased the drugs that they're taking and hopefully we'll see some improvement in the next day or so. So condition can deteriorate or get worse. So to deteriorate means also to, to rot. Yeah. So plants can deteriorate once they die. Trees, they don't get enough water or they get some infection. They can also rot from the inside or deteriorate over a period of time until eventually they fall over and they die. Articulate, to articulate. He articulates himself very well, particularly when he's making presentations. He's very clear and easy to understand. Please make sure you articulate all the words so that people can hear them very clearly and understand exactly what they mean. So when you articulate something, you spell it out, you explain it very clearly and in an understandable way that people will know the meaning or what point you're trying to get across. How did he articulate himself? Oh, excellent. He's a really good on his feet. He's one of those natural speakers. Just give him an audience, give, give him a topic, a little while to prepare for it. And he's really, really good. He's very good at articulating points. He'll get the point across. Everybody will understand very, very clearly what he means. So to articulate your point, to explain it, to explain it properly, to explain it in an understandable way and format. Articulate. Next, to embrace. When she came down the stairs, he embraced her with a large hug. He hadn't seen her for two years. So to embrace means to wrap your arms around somebody, pull them closely to you, and give them a big squeeze, hug, kiss, to welcome them home if it's been several years since you have seen them, to embrace. They embraced at the foot of the stairs. They embraced each other at Christmas time. Yeah, He always embraces his kids and grandchildren when he sees them. So to wrap his arms around them and give them a nice squeeze or a nice hug. But we can also use embrace to, when we talk about change, he embraced the change, meaning he, meaning he welcomed the change. He embraced the new management in the company. He didn't literally go up and hug them, but what, what it meant and what it means is that he took on board the change, the necessity for change. He welcomed the change and he was very open to suggestions that they would make. So he embraced change. You can say, I embrace change, I love change, I like change, I welcome change, to embrace it. To liaise with somebody. To liaise with somebody. Now, this can be quite formal. So the foreign department of one country decided they had to liaise with the foreign department of the other country, otherwise they were not going to find out what happened to their missing citizens. So the Department of Foreign Affairs liaised with the Foreign Department of the British officers to find out what had happened to the missing people, to liaise. So to liaise is to contact, but it's not just simply to say yes or no, it's to find out more information. So in a detailed, professional way. So to liaise might mean initially to make a phone call, send a request, send an email, make a formal application. These are all ways in which we can liaise with somebody. Who is going to liaise 
with our new business partners in China. So we need somebody who understands the language, somebody who knows what they are talking about to liaise. Who will liaise with the solicitor in this matter? This legal case is going to go on for several months and we need somebody with a legal background to liaise with them. Okay, so to liaise, a formal way of saying negotiate, contact, discuss, ask, find out what's going on to liaise. Next, to accomplish. Well, when we accomplish something, we achieve something. He accomplished four promotions in the space of seven years. He was a star performer in the company. So to accomplish something is to be successful, to reach some goal, to achieve something. He's accomplished all his exams in record time. So he achieved top marks right throughout his university course from his first year to his last year. So he got a one degree, meaning the top degree, yes? A one, one, so it couldn't be better. He got honors, first class honors degree in his medical course. He was really, really one of the top people in his year, in his class, or in his particular grade, okay? So he accomplished a lot in a short space of time, meaning he achieved a lot in a short space of time. What have you accomplished in your life? Somebody might ask you the question. Indeed, I ask myself that question many times. What have I accomplished in my life? So we look back on our lives to see what we've done, what we could have done better, what we can do, what we can do better, because what we want to do is we want to accomplish something, not necessarily for the financial reward, not to be remunerated, the word we used earlier on, but for our self satisfaction to say that we could do it, that we have done it, that we have achieved, accomplished something. Okay, so to accomplish. And then finally, grasp. He wasn't able to grasp the concept. I explained it to him several times before he really understood it. He grasped my arm and squeezed it tightly. So here we have two meanings of this particular word. He wasn't able to grasp the meaning of what I said. It took me six or seven times for him to understand it. So meaning he wasn't able to understand, to grasp, to work out exactly what I was telling him. It might have been too complicated. I might have explained it badly, but whatever it was, he wasn't able to grasp the concept. And then he grasped to hold tightly. He grasped my arm and, and whispered something in my ear. To grasp means to hold on tightly. Yeah, so you grasp the bar on the bus as it's going around the corner. Yeah, you grasp onto uh, something to, to steady yourself so you don't fall. To grasp, so to hold tightly or to understand a concept, to grasp. Okay, so let me give them to you one more time. And remember, these are C1, C2 verbs. They're quite difficult, so you have to give them a lot of thinking but you can use them from an exam point of view. So, to scrutinize, to look at something in detail, to scrutinize. To hinder, to block, slow down, prevent uh, somebody from making progress. Remunerate, to pay somebody, to reward them for doing a job. Reward or remunerate for the right work, the right pay for the right job. To nurture, to look after something really carefully. The the cat nurtured her litter of kittens. We nurture our family for many, many years. Deteriorate. His condition deteriorated over several days, and finally, unfortunately, he died to deteriorate, to go downhill. Articulate. He is well able to articulate the point. He is able to present and get the point across so that everybody understands it in a very, very clear way. To embrace, to take somebody in your arms and embrace them, to welcome them, to hold them in a loving and affectionate way, to embrace, or to embrace change. Always look forward to change. Never close your, your mind uh, to any idea. Always look ahead. To, li to liaise, to liaise with somebody, or some people pronounce it liaise, but 
to liaise. To liaise is to communicate with, to contact, to discuss, to ask questions, to find out in a fairly professional and top-level way particularly where diplomats from different foreign offices or embassies will liaise with their counterparty in another office in another country. To accomplish, what have you accomplished in your life? Nothing! Well, yes, we all would like to accomplish something, to accomplish. And then finally, grasp, grasp the idea, grasp the concept, grasp my hand and hold on for the journey. Okay, so those are advanced English verbs at C1, C2 level. If you have any problems with them or you want others that we can include later on, but by all means write and let me know, www.englishlessonviaskype.com. Very happy to hear from you. And as always, I'm very glad you joined me. I hope you enjoyed that. Join me again soon.